All right, so we just watched RRR, and I think I had more fun with it than with any film we've seen so far, and that's a high praise, to be honest. Yeah, I have to say, you were very vocal about your enjoyment throughout the film. You couldn't see it, but I was smiling the whole time, so I guess I'll play that little intro and get going. Alright, so quick initial thoughts. I was going to show Sleepy John Wick at some point, and now I feel like I can't do that because this would have outshined it in every way. <laughs> For sort of the extravagance of and physicalism, it seems hard to outdo this. Yeah, and I think I mentioned at some point during the watch through that the only way I could really describe it generally was that it was sort of literary in its scope and with its character motivations and the exploration of them. It was just a great movie. I, so at least it has some recognition. The things to concentrate upon for this review are those elements in which the movie excels compared to the most parallel things we have in the Hollywood sphere. Right? Yeah. So you, you mentioned John Wick. I mentioned while we were watching things like Marvel movies. There are action sequences, very many action sequences in A this lot. movie. The action is in many ways one of the selling points of the movie. <laughs> action goes it was far more grand than far more grounded in some ways and at other times far more extravagant than anything except maybe the best stuff in say you know the, the avengers movies you have to go to the peak to even match this kind of uh, yeah. choreography and just the the over the topness but the thing is there are elements that felt sort of grounded in their over the topness i yeah that, particularly i suppose that sequence in the prison break is what i would consider sort of grounded but also a little silly it, it certainly felt superhuman yes and if i were to criticize any part of the film with regard to sort of believability it really is the sort of final bit of the film that I didn't like quite as much because it just went so far into the realm of the superhuman that it almost lost some of that the humanity which really drew me in in the first half of the film felt left behind to a degree by the divinity of the end of the film yeah it shifted away from this i would call it almost a character drama a story of friendship between these two characters of uh, beam and rom I into this sort of superhero movie no, it, was, yeah. it was definitely so, intentional like it never felt it was, unearned I yeah. do agree at some level that the ending further out there than I would have liked. I think it's it's a matter of expectation as well. Yeah. Like, if you notice, for example, in the final sequence, there's this uh, both explicit and visual language reference to divinity, to, to being like the gods. And so the fact that the action sort of builds up to that level of this almost uh, apotheosis of our heroes, it makes sense from a internal literary point of view. That said, it does sort of escape the initial initial groundedness, the initial humanness, which I thought was more compelling, honestly. And you know, is probably best summarized in the introduction of Rom, that sequence right. where they have to catch this guy, and there's a massive riot around this police station, and he just goes out there and does it himself. Right. And, and from you know, a technical point of view, that is pretty superhuman. Yes. You do not go into a mob and just win against a mob, but it, it's just close enough to the realm of plot. Possibility. I'm 100% willing to believe anything I saw in that sequence. <laughs> sheer amount of determination. I said several times through the movie that I think Rom has the best introduction of any action character I've ever seen in my life. It is rather distinct from some of the other characters we've seen in action movies. Yeah. For example, you know, in Die Hard, we're not introduced to him being uh, an action hero because the angle that we're pushing is not this sort of superhuman physicality, but obviously it's, uh, there's a family man that is a likable guy, so on and so forth. Here, because the first thing that we're supposed to see, and the last thing that we're supposed to see is this epic proportion of his 
might sheer dry of the man that he really is this sort of samson-esque i can beat a hundred men at once i will i will get my man i will drag the guy out it, it was really good and also since he acts as a sort of antagonist through much of the film it really does a great job not just establishing him as an action hero but as a sort of villainous introduction right? an unstoppable is, force exactly you now this is the terminator that's after you and let me tell you you do not you want know, him he, after he, you the t-1000 <laughs> looks like a you know a house sell the clients next to this guy yeah, uh, and obviously this film sort of plays off of a lot of the traditional nature versus society struggles and also the colonialism in India. And there's a, quite a few themes that are in this movie that you've seen elsewhere, but they're all woven together in a very compelling way. I, It's funny, I think one of the first comparisons I made is that their friendship reminded me of Gilgamesh and Enkidu from the Epic of Gilgamesh, especially when their friendship song starts playing and the lyrics are talking about how one's a tiger and one's a wolf and one's a, you know, a volcano. <laughs> you know? One's a whirlwind, you know, they're the union of opposites. It's like, well, you know, but, but that is, I think, the most charming element of the film. And when I say the humanity, it's not just the sort of almost grounded action sequences, but absolutely the, the humanness of their friendship. Yeah. Which, as... which is of heroic proportions, <laughs> But it's so it's so heartening, it's so believable, it's so uh, beautiful. Yeah, this is a movie that would not have worked if it weren't for the charisma of the two lead actors and the friendship they portray on screen. I give full props to them because you felt all the emotion. They're very good face actors. And and well, the sheer physicality as well uh, on display. Right, these are, it's incredible. They look like tough guys. Yeah, but two different kind of tough guys. They chose two people who great in their own different way. And so that rivalry, I don't know for sure because I haven't looked it up, but I'd have to imagine that maybe these two have like a friendly rivalry in the industry as far as actors go. It just seems to me like maybe this is playing on that. Can't say for sure, obviously, but it just feels that way to me. And so it builds on itself. I will say uh, another element, which like the, the sort of almost change in genre that comes at the end, hmm. another element which we weren't extremely huge fans of, but we were forgiving of, was the almost stilted or fantastically artificial dialogue of British characters. Yeah, we understood why and we knew the purpose of it and to some extent agreed with the directing just because it didn't really matter too much. The focus is not on them. They're more like, right. ju they're just a force that's there. They are the backdrop. Exactly. They are stiff and wooden and unbelievable, not because they're unbelievably evil, but because they have a sort of Disney-esque flair in their evilness <laughs> they're unapologetically and cartoonishly evil. even if and here here i am not to minimize the actual evil i'm not saying that this wouldn't happen but rather yeah. no human being would express themselves in these terms even if they are <laughs> uh, actual moral monsters try this one It was, it was all very funny. Uh, I think, and, it, and at the end of the day, it did work for the film, but I would have preferred a little rewritten dialogue. The directing was slightly different, but once again, it felt like a deliberate artistic choice. Yeah. It, I, I don't think it was a flaw with the movie so much as just something that is not fully to our taste. And you know, speaking and, of that conflict in general, I think I want to mention before we go on to favorite scenes or anything, uh, just how happy it made me to have a movie where the people who are making it are clearly very proud and happy of their history and of their people. It's just a nice little aside I want to point out. It's just great to see that on the screen. Uh, it even ends with a musical number that sort of summarizes that feeling. I think the, especially the initial parts where their friendship is developing, I thought was the, the real meat of the movie. Yeah, those are very, very important scenes and they need to happen and they need to be compelling. And the character development between the two is great. I, th I suppose a great example of that is the sequel where Rom is trying to help Beam get a conversation or a date with the lady. And so he takes nails from a, a shop and puts it down so her car breaks down and he has to give her a ride there. This is the mischievousness of it. Yeah, there, there's this very just believable but also unbelievably beautiful friendship. Unabashedly masculine and outrageously immediate. I, I don't know. You, you can apply all sorts of superlatives to it. Entirely just. And that's why I, I really thought that was the most enjoyable thing about the film. And the best part to me is that a lot of that was set up in a song through a musical sequence. 
You get to see their friendship develop and time pass without necessarily having to spend all of your time with it. And, and by the end, you understand they are great friends. And even better, some of that came back at the end. I know it's just very basic, but a lot of films don't do this sort of setup and payoff properly. And this film did it often and did it well. Right. Frequently and well. It always put a smile on my face. <laughs> I, I would say it, it might have been a little bit less tight than some of the other movies we've seen. Like, yeah. Uh, the recent Lethal Weapon, which is also a sort of a story about a friendship between two skilled men, shall we say, it certainly has a very different timber to it, a different feeling to it. I felt that was a little bit tighter than this one. But on the other hand, this one is, you know, it's an epic friendship. I think your example of, of Gilgamesh and Enkidu, or uh, I think my example was um, from Robin Hood, right? Yes. But that, that sort of immediate bonding, it, it's just so aspirational. <sighs> It's the kind of thing that, that we, you know, we here as two friends yeah. uh, since, since childhood, we're, yeah, since we're like, preschool. that's what we want. <laughs> yeah. that, you know, this is what we want. This is like what we want to be blown up to heroic proportions. It's very difficult to do something that ambitious so well, and yet they've done it just stunningly well in this movie. Yeah, they seem to understand what makes cinema more so than most Western directors I've seen. Because they, they communicate things visually constantly. There's music and everything, but it always conveys the story they want to tell. Even though it's three hours long, it does it what feels very efficiently. Right. There's just this... <laughs> They, That's a power they, of ha vision. Yeah, the power of vision behind it. It's just nice that it can have all these aspects of great filmmaking and still also be one of the most fun things I've ever experienced. <laughs> I, it reminds film. me a lot of Metropolis in that way, how it, it, mm -hmm. it manages to fill the runtime of, of three hours and yet never seem to really flag in its pace or drag all too much. I do have my complaints about the end, like yeah. I said, but it's more about the tonal shift or the, the shift into uh, almost a different genre or... Or, or it, you know, once again, this, this is from my perspective. We don't have these kinds of stories very frequently. But it, it was, like you said, it was nice to see a very masculine friendship portrayed in a way that was so positive. But and that's just because of the cynicism that's applied to it in a lot of modern storytelling and filmmaking. You no, know, sometimes it just is a great friendship. <laughs> I wonder if it has anything to do with the rather uh, patriotic sort of message of the film, right? Yeah. If, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about the brothership of a nation, you better be capable of you know describing the the brotherhood between two men, right? <laughs> That's true. And and it's it is a very patriotic film, especially the ending sequence. It was that the ending musical number. It, right. It really I mean, that was a little on the nose, obviously, but that's okay. This is our summary of the message of the movie for you, the viewing audience. Right. It's sort of, it's almost like sort of Puck coming out onto the stage and, and directly addressing the audience. Yeah, well, especially it's considering that way. Yeah. Especially considering there were characters who died in the movie who were back for singing and dancing in that sequence. Oh, yeah. It does have that sort of almost Greek element, right, of, of Greek theater where not only is it sort of uh, epic in scope, but the reason why it's supposed to be epic is it's supposed to be a sort of national epic. Yeah, they, they're addressing the citizenry in general and talking about what it is to be Indian. It, it, in, in a way that really warmed my heart. I'm generally happy when I see people being happy and proud of where they come from, and so this film being so patriotic was nice. I think this is a modern version of a national epic, as you said. It's not written, it's performed. I, I will say, and I certainly prefer it to, you know, Disney making a film about rebellion, you know, Star yeah. like Star Wars, right? We're comparing this constantly to Star Wars and saying, well, you know, it's kind of, it falls rather thin when, when Disney makes a, a film about resisting an evil empire. It's like, look, di you're Disney, okay? Yeah, you're, but, you are the evil empire. <laughs> yeah, so it, it kind of falls a little flat. Compared to that, this feel, you know, not only is the evil empire here, the, the British empire uh, legitimately in many ways evil. Not, not in every way, right? Yes. Uh, but let's be nuanced here. Like there, there will, you know, there will be no wife burning and all that. But, but that aside, like you also have to look at the crimes, and every empire has its crimes. Usually, the empire has a lot of crimes, <laughs> and there's something much more engaging about uh, a genuine empire being the evil empire than, ah, uh, yes, our commercialized generic .tm evil empire that's just a Nazi analog and so on. 
and so forth. Yeah, um, and I suppose to continue a point we were making earlier, that's partially why I felt like the evil English in the movie were okay, because it felt like Emperor Palpatine or one of these sort of figures in Star Wars. God, we're just so into being evil that it's like, right. you, you don't uh, feel any qualms about right. what's, what happens. Governor Scott reminded me very much of the fellow in Hunger Games. Yes, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got that sort of white, uh, graying beard and that sort of imperial dress and everything. It almost felt like a wasted opportunity. If this was not supposed to be a national epic, it would have been a wasted opportunity not to have him be even more on screen as this sort of evil, competent presence. Because there are a few scenes where, like, he is genuinely menacing. Like, he is physical. He he does some of these stunts too. Like, he, he's a, yeah. he's presented as a threat. Although, uh, as as the sort of course of the film goes on, he, he becomes a bit more and more shrill. Although I will say his best moment is towards the end of the film. He gets launched out of the car and still manages to get a shot right. off. <laughs> yeah, no, that. That man's a menace but then again our heroes are even more broke everything is scaled up which is why a lot of this would be strange or off-putting in another film works so well I, I think the only reason why the, the change in scale bothered me to some extent is just because it, it drops sort of the not just the grandness in, in sort of uh, scale but also in physical location that the initial part of the film has because it feels very much in the city and there's uh, there's very much a sense of being in the location there's a, a number of shots that really use physical uh, the relationship of locations very well. The train sequence is very great. train sequence was really good also the, the riot sequence at the, the start of the movie that we already mentioned where ram is introduced that also i thought was a very good use of explaining a physical space and letting you see it a couple times so that the action flows well and makes a lot of sense although there is a certain sense of physical space at, in the in the final battle it felt less consequential it didn't feel like a real place and yeah. the, the action felt very marvel in many ways yeah, it, it really wasn't was as important for the superhuman, end. right? Yeah. And I, I kind of miss that. I, I wish it was much more of a, a of a grounded campaign with all the superheroes mixed in. That's a that's a matter of version. And, and I see why it's developed this way. I would wholeheartedly recommend it. I'm skipping ahead a little yeah, bit likewise. that, yeah. but if you're somebody who likes action at all, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to get at least something out of this movie. Right, and, and, so, and one of the best sort of action, I don't want to set piece uh, scenario, really, you know, the prison beat sequence, like you mentioned, is just absolutely over the top in a beautiful way. Uh, yes, yeah, and it's very unique. I don't think I've ever seen that done in a film. And to, not to spoil what happens, but there were quite a few moments where when wait they're not going there are they oh they are that's awesome <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah like i said i was smiling the whole time maybe not during the sad moments but even then i was like i was I, you know what? i was smiling through some of those just because i was so happy to have a film i was invested in i usually don't remember character names but rom and beam i'm going to remember if you haven't seen it you should check it out it's three hours long though so you have to set some time aside uh, but it's worth doing yeah, I agree. Any final thoughts? Watch it with your best friend. Oh, watch yeah, it with watch your it best with your best buddy, friend. Right? From a, a merely probabilistic point of view, we're here on YouTube. Yeah. You may or may not be two dudes. We're good friends. Watch it, you know, watch it with your guy friends. You can watch it with your girlfriends, too, but, uh, you know. They might not get saying, as much from it. <laughs> they might not get as much from it. This there, is there, is a romance, there is a romance angle to it, but it's much, it's, it's, this movie is for the boys. It's in the last third of the film, I would say, the romance where it really kicks in. So she'd have to wait for a while. This is a hyper-masculine film about a very solid male friendship, and it's well worth sharing with a friend. Exactly. Um, and we're not being exclusivist. We're saying... Optimal enjoyment. What, <laughs> optimal enjoy. If that's what you have, you will appreciate having shared that with your friend. I want to give a few final thoughts. The score was great. Oh, Oftentimes. yeah. Yeah, especially Rom's theme when it came in. You knew things were about to go down when his, yeah. like, fight theme would kick in. Right. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely, you know, we've had, you know, these old themes, you know, the Criterion Correction or whatever. It's like, the music's not so good. Not here. Here, the music is up to 11 and excellent all the way through. I will say it's kind of strange because 
it's not very consistent in this instrumentation. It goes all over the place, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think a lot of the movie, it just fits. It usually just fits. Right. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have that one song that dun 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 stuck in my head for a long time, I think. <laughs> I guess one more thing is yeah. to say, uh, as you might expect from what we've already mentioned, there's a bit of uh, perhaps anachronism, perhaps super realism or a sort of surreal picturesqueness of certain scenes, uh, certain settings, certain locations. I, 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 re I was remembering this because you brought up the instrumentation and there's that bit with the drums, which I, yeah. I think was rather anachronistic. I could be wrong on this, but it seems so to me. That yeah. said, that said, uh, once again, I. Don't, I think that's a stylistic choice, perfectly legitimate, and should not get in the way of enjoying this. Yeah, the the things that will probably stand out to just a casual viewer and not one who's super into history like we can be, uh, probably the drum kit, maybe the lights in that area. I, and then I'm that, not brave enough to say I, I'm <laughs> deep I in know. history. But, well, you know, <laughs> the, the helmets, for example, stood out to us at one point, and I don't think the average yeah. person would really care. But I don't um, know if they're inaccurate, but I was wondering about it. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I think the easiest point, something that stands out to me and stood out to me immediately, is that map on the wall of the oh, yeah, that, British that, Empire. That felt very modern. It was very modern, yeah. Not in a bad... Like we said, this film is, is hyper-real. It's not supposed to be... It's very stylized. It's not supposed to be super realistic. Uh, a lot of a lot of it is done for the sake of making right. it entertaining for you. It, it's it's not a period piece, you know, any more than say like watching Captain America is a period piece. Yeah, you're here to watch Captain America, you know, hang out with his best bro Bucky, except even better. Uh, you know, that, that, that's how I put yes. this movie. It's that, but like even better it, by a lot. It's not even close. It's it's not even close. I, I would I, I would give a round of applause to the director for being able to bring all this together in such a fun and compelling way, and to the two lead actors for being so so good at what they're doing. Right, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and I don't think there are like any bad actors, right? It, I think you know some there are some places where the directing was, in our opinion, a little bit weird. Yeah, it but must be strange. Sense, it, yeah, yeah. It, I would have to imagine that it is strange. Also, have to dub these sequences over, oh, right. and know yeah. that you have to do that too. So the directing, especially considering how short some of the lines were, it feels like it was trying to take that into consideration. Could be. Besides the stilted dialogue, there's nothing else that really stands out as far as super negative to me. Okay, once again, occasionally. Occasionally, something. and only for only the really for the British character, for the right? two British villains, and I guess maybe that that other bigger guy who, from earlier in the film, who's also a villain, the guy that put a key on his on his wrist, that guy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but once Somebody, again, they're 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 supposed to be cartoonish. Yeah. Yeah, it's not something that's going to take you out of the film, really. And it definitely it, it, would not it, take the intended original audience out of the film either, I don't think. It, it, it's it's an intentional feature, and seen that way, it doesn't bother you. Oh, yeah, I guess I guess with that, oh, yeah, don't call it Bollywood. It's not right, Bollywood. It's not a Bollywood film. Yeah, don't call it that. <laughs> it's like it's like telling an indie filmmaker that uh, he's, a, he's made a Hollywood film. <laughs> it's just mean. Don't do it. <laughs> But yeah, all right. Well, definitely check it out. And I think that's about it for my final thoughts. Anything else? Go watch it with a friend. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And uh, stay copacetic. Stay copacetic. What's your name? It's a very big name, brother. But I remember it. Don't call me Mesa. बिट्टी सी जेनियस हाँ दो कॉमी में साब बिट्टी सी जेनियस ये पूरा उसका नाम नहीं है